online. <laughs> you know that we are. I'm just trying to see some um, some chat. We are live. It says we are live. I don't see any evidence of it, but I'm sure we are. Let me just make sure that we are. Yes, we are. Good. So, Namaste. Namaste, Lisa. Hi, Deva. Namaste. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Wow, so this is, I've never done this before, like like I said. And have you done this before? Never, Deva. Like <laughs> never. <laughs> but it's exciting. It is. It is. Yeah. It was, I just, when we did our daily meditations and then sometimes I would share something that, that you said in a session or something and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be so beautiful if we could invite everybody to this and see what what comes. And uh, and uh, I just say again how I met you because um, it's that's the beginning of our story is that I got a message and uh, and we get a lot of messages and beautiful messages and this one somehow stuck out because it's exactly what I am so uh, attracted to and interested in is messages from beyond so there was this message from this woman called Lisa, now I know it's called, you know, you say Naja, Lisa Naja, uh, that you were channeling this book and using our music uh, almost like an inspiration while you were channeling and that even George Harrison commented on our music and Mark Twain in your book and would you, would you like, um, would I like you to send it to me? And of course, I wanted to read that book, and you sent it, and I was so totally touched. And that's it was the beginning of our our friendship and our sessions. That that uh, is now a few years. I think I, I found the photo that I posted is about three years ago that we met for the first time. So, so um, I just thought it would be so beautiful if you could tell everybody a little bit how you got to do this and your little your story of of yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. And yes, I remember it like it was yesterday, Deva, and it's been a really beautiful friendship since then. So, and, and, and yes, I did use your, uh, your music and it helped me when I was channeling and how I started. Um, I start my book by saying, as you know, I used to be a court reporter. Now I'm reporting for a higher court, not the Supreme Court, but the Celestial Court. And that's really what it was. I was a court reporter and just doing my own thing. And um, Walt Disney came to me and asked me if I would do a project with him. Uh, and I said, well, at first he came a few years earlier to tell me about a TV show I was working on and said, never give up on your dream. I'm going to help you with this. And then fast forward a few years, he came to me and said, would you do a project for us? And it's a book. And I said, no. <laughs> I said no. Why did we go? Well, because I couldn't. I couldn't make sense of that. I was a single mom. I had to work. I thought I'm not a writer. What if, why would he come to me and ask me to do a book? I, and he said, "But you're a court reporter. You're just going to take dictation." And I said, "Oh, okay." But I still just wasn't. I wasn't ready. I, I guess I was just doing what I did. I was trying to provide for my son and get through the days. And this just seemed so out there. I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it. So, um, but you were already channeling at that point. Yes, I did for friends and family only. Mm. I honestly never thought I would be doing it professionally uh, because I didn't really think it was the way that I would be helping the world. And I've always wanted to help raise consciousness on the planet, but I didn't think it would be that way. Mm. So that took me by surprise. And finally he came back on, well, him, and Abraham Lincoln and George Harrison came on East, uh, Good Friday of 2015 and said, now will you do the book? And I said, yes, now I will do the book because I, my son is off in university and I can do this now. And that's where it began. And I did. I used uh, my sweet Lord to take me up into a high vibration. I was just so full of joy when I would hear that song and I would channel 
And, and the whole time I was channeling after I was in that higher state, I would put your Gayatri mantra on. And it was just heavenly. It took me into a beautiful, very beautiful space. And so I feel like your music is the soundtrack to that book. And I've said that on many, many interviews and things. So, yeah. Wow. And then um, through that connection, we started. Obviously, I wanted to know about my parents because they both passed on and, and uh, I was so curious and they came through quite a few times and it's very, very transforming and touching and, and also put like things in perspective. And I was always amazed how you really got the essence. Wow, it's so like my father was, you know, there's something about his essence that I could feel so strongly when you when you brought through their messages. And, um, and then we thought, oh, let's just open space for whatever wants to come, you know? And actually one of our closest um, soul brothers in the, in the beyond is our beloved friend Shandas. And I kind of secretly, I asked him earlier, would you, would you come? Um, Shandas, some, some of you have sure heard about Shandas because we've mentioned him so many times. And uh, he is our dear friend who is a, an, was an inspired um, uh, human being, a poet, a singer. Uh, he was just, I mean, you can't even put him into kind of a category. He lived in India for 40 years being an American and sang and, and, and led kirtan and, and, um, and was a very very also very knowledgeable like a real pundit he could speak sanskrit he was like we were we visited him and he actually could have a, a conversation in sanskrit which is very rare that people can do this nowadays you know where this language no no more is spoken like that so anyway he's one of our closest friends Mithen and i and uh, and he took us into the heart of india into the heart of krishna devotion into the heart of the heart heart of friendship And I was so touched when he came through with Lisa, um, you know, in one of the sessions early on. And then he kept coming quite a lot of times. And uh, I thought, uh, just for those of you who are also still uh, sending questions, that's what I also said in the other, in the, uh, yesterday in the meditation, that we're going to focus on questions that concern everybody because, you know, it's just much more interesting for everybody rather than going into personal stories, because that's more something that you could do in a, in a personal individual session. But for now, for today, we're going to see what, what comes through that concerns us as a Sangha, as a community or as a human community. So, um, so yeah, um, if, what do you, what do you, how do you, how do we do this, Lisa? Shall we say, What the question is, or shall we say, would like would Chandra's like to come, or how do, how do you think would be best? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think we can start with questions and then kind of see what happens because in in typical groups that I do, sometimes we'll just get started and then, well, you know, with Sean, it just comes right in, or or sometimes it'll be whoever. I mean, George Harrison's been. He's been around since November, quite a bit, popping in and out. And uh, the other night, which is the first, I had a full dream that he was talking to me. And I thought, I wonder if he has something to say. So we don't know. We'll just kind of let this all play out. It could be an archangel. I don't know who will come. But let's just kind of move on. You know, we'll just start with questions, maybe. So my question is, um, I just would like to know this. these... What we're doing here, this coming together every day and singing and chanting and and everybody who does this, you know, the, you know, there's so many humans really, really giving into the field and, and uplifting, but especially with the singing and chanting. What does that feel like from the beyond? What does that uh, look like or what what anything that they can shine their light on? Um, yeah, what that what that looks like. I would have to answer that by saying in, in the book, Elvis talks about acts of kindness and how 
one act of kindness reverberates all throughout the eternity. And if you could, he says, if you could see what I see from up there, down from up there, you would do kindness all day long. And when we pray and gather and chant, like we, we do with you every day, and thank you so much for that gift every morning. Well, every afternoon for me, but uh, it's so beautiful. And that collective energy is this basically a ball of light. And it literally just goes out into eternity. Mm. So it, raise, it raises vibration and each person their own uh, their own vibration is lifted, and man, that means everything. Mm. You know, each person just did the work to raise their own vibration by chanting, meditating, doing the things that spirit asks us to do. Then you know, it it moves everything. Mm. It's just everything. Mm. So it's very, very, it's so lovely. And, you know, I mean, Jesus apparently said, you know, where two or more are gathered. And it's true. You know, people that can see energy, when if there's an accident ahead, they can see when people are praying for the person in the car in front or behind. So imagine thousands and thousands and thousands of people all at once meditating, chanting, mm -hmm. praying. It's powerful, Deva. Mm. It's powerful. Mm. So I think it's it's beautiful, and and the more of that we do, the better it is to just help ourselves raise our own vibration. Because as one is lifted, we are all lifted. Mm. Yeah. So maybe you can ask how we can increase that even more. What what it is that we can do to to make it even more powerful, or you know, just uh, just to expand on that. I'm sure Sean does have something today to say about this. He or George, because they were both singing. They were both. They both have this connection to mantra and to chanting and to the joy that is connected to that. Yes, yes, and, and I do feel I feel the presence of beings around me right now. So, um, so we will see. Of course, you know, when I'm closing my eyes like that, it's usually a higher soul. Um, and I do feel Sean here. And we always know it's Sean because I can't stop smiling. There's a smile that I cannot wipe off my face. He is so full of joy and I... I didn't know him until I met you. I didn't know anything about him. And all of a sudden this being came whooshing in and he was just pure joy. And, uh, and so I love when he comes in and I can feel him. I can feel him because of the, just the joy right now. So I just want to take a minute to breathe him in. Let's all do that. Let's all just close our eyes for a moment and just tune into that feeling of joy. That's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. And it's so expansive. Just feel the joy inside of you. Forget about everything that's going on right now and just feel the joy. Because he's saying that we are joy beings. We are joy beings. We are love beings. That's what we are. This, all the rest of it is not our true selves. It's not. We're made for joy, for love, for peace. And play. He's talking about play. He loves to talk about play. Mm -hmm. Very important. Very important. He's, 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 he's reminding me, Deva, that... Uh, in other sessions, he's talked about how in fifth dimensional realities, people play, the beings play, and there's no such thing as work. It's only for a few hours a day at only that which you love, that which you love. 
So there's no obligation to be doing all kinds of things that don't feel right to us. And he's saying that we're moving into that beautiful fifth dimensional energy. And that's what this all is. It's to clear away that which is not true, that which is not us, that which is no longer needed and bring forth what's authentically ours. And that is love, joy, peace, unity, all those things that, that I know they sound so cliche, but he's saying, but it's real and it's true. So let go of what doesn't serve us. Let go, let go, let go. And step more and more into this beautiful joy. The singing, the dancing, the chanting, the, the, the laughing. He's saying to laugh is so important. <laughs> laughing, laughing, playing. And celebrating, and Dave, I'm remembering in January when I to, when he came through and he gave you a, a birthday message. <laughs> and, uh, and he talked a lot about birthdays. And he said, you know, birthdays are really important as uh, along with, you know, any celebration, New Year's and Fourth of July, Christmas, whatever it is, all the holidays and all the uh, traditions. Because for one reason, they bring us to a place of joy. That's when we stop our busyness and we start like laughing and playing and connecting and communing and gathering. And he said, any excuse for something like that is, is worth it. It's a party. It's a joy. It's a celebration. So do it and do it often. Mm. Um, there's no time like the present. He's saying there's no time like the present. We need more joy everywhere. In our hearts, let's start with our hearts first. Bring it inside. Find the things that make you joyful. Be around the people who bring you up, lift you, lift you. Mm -hmm. Listen to music that brings you up. Uh, connect in ways that bring you up. Read things that make you happy. Those things that feel like truth and joy to you. And he's showing me a web it is really like a like a spider web but it's 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 a beautiful light filled web and he's showing me how we're all connected and and i've never seen this quite like this before it's it's really something deva it's shimmery and there's not it's just all light it's just it's such a high vibration and he's showing me the points of light all along these, these, these lines. And, and they're all of us. They're all of us. And he's saying on planet and off planet. Mm -hmm. So your loved ones, your guardian angels, your spirit guides, uh, you know, high beings, they're all, it's a web and we're all in it. It's, 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 it's beautiful. And he's saying we're part of that. We're not separate from that. So really connect in with even those that, that bring you to that place of um, truth. So if it's a loved one that you had a great connection with, connect with them. If it's a high being that you uh, resonate with, connect with them. Do it often, he's saying, do it often. And he's saying, this too shall pass. <laughs> this that we're all involved in. He's saying, yes, it's real. It's in front of us. It, it's real. It's in our reality collectively. And uh, he's saying it's serving a grand purpose. He's saying it would take many, many sittings to explain exactly the details of how and why and what is unfolding. And he says it's very complicated. <laughs> but suffice it to say that there is a divine and perfect order here. It is, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. We are releasing all that does not serve individually and collectively. And we are stepping into the boldness and the greatness of who we are individually and collectively. And it's high time. He's saying it's high time. 
He's saying, you guys have been doing, we've all, because he was here as well, we've all been doing this going round after round after round after round in this same paradigm of, of fight and flight and, and, and might makes right and, and, and you know, eye for an eye and competition and, and all of it. It's just, he's saying, aren't you tired? He says, I was. <laughs> I was, I really wanted to really know the truth and know what, what else there is. And he's saying, oh, there's lots, there's lots. And it's right there. He's saying it's so, it's so close. You can grab a hold of it now. And he's saying, you know, back in the day, one had to be a perfected being. And it's funny, I was just saying this to somebody. He's saying, yes, Lisa, back in the day, we had to be this perfected being and we had to work so many lifetimes to be so, you know, to, to do all the different practices and all these kinds of things. And these days, they're making it easy for us. They're making it easy. It may not seem easy in this moment. It's, it may not as humans right now. It's not seeming easy. But he says, if you could stand back and see it from a bigger place, it's being made easy. We don't have to become these perfected beings lifetime after lifetime of holiness. We actually can raise our vibration now and there's a divine dispensation coming that will help us to attain that beautiful higher state so much easier. So align with love, align with peace, align with joy. He gets excited when I say it that way, joy, align with joy, laugh a lot, Really go inside and find out what's not working for you anymore. Find out what it is. If it's a job, if it's a, a situation you're in, a, a relationship you're in, a place you live, find out what isn't serving you anymore and really get in touch with who you are and what you need to do going forward because this too shall pass. It will pass. And we're walking into a different uh, reality. And we have the choice. We have the choice. We can stay the other way or we can walk into this. Everyone has a choice, he says. But the more we align with God, the God of your understanding, the more you align with your true self, the easier this will be and the sooner it will resolve. And to help each other, he's saying, help each other up, lift each other up. The more we do that for each other, the higher we go ourselves. And then he's bringing me back to what he said to us a number of times, Deva, do the inner work, get our house in order get our own inner house in order. So what he means by that is any attachments we still have to things, material things, ideas, beliefs, things like that, that just don't bring us where we need to go. They don't serve us anymore. Work on that, clear that, heal that, resolve that. Do the things we want to do. Find out what our truth is and speak it. Find out what our truth is and do it. Let fear go. Have the courage to just go into your, to your authentic joy place. And he's saying you can't go wrong with these suggestions. You can't go wrong. They will serve you no matter what happens. And he's also saying we're creating minute by minute what's happening in the planet around, around the globe here. We're creating that minute by minute by our choices every single moment. So our choice to do some of these things, to get in touch with our truth, to speak our truth, to own our truth, to stand in our power, to cultivate love, joy, kindness, peace, and those wonderful things, to connect with the God of understanding, to connect in these beautiful ways like mantra and prayer and meditation, to do those things, he's saying, they will stand you in good stead no matter what. And then help each other up. When somebody's fallen, help them up. 
he's, she's showing me how we're linking arms around the world, really. We're, we're all just kind of, I can see him doing it. He's kind of doing it with me right now. And uh, to link arms, and he's showing me how it's going around the globe, and it's so beautiful. And he's saying, look at, look at them, Lisa. They're just full of light. Each person, as I see them, is, is just a beacon of light. They're just radiating. It's so beautiful. And it's this circle that doesn't end. And they're all perfect and beautiful. And that, that, that goes to what Jesus has shown me many times and asked me to share. No matter what, we are perfect and beautiful. No matter what, no matter what we've done ever, no matter what we've ever done, said, or thought, we are perfect and beautiful right here, right now. And Sean's saying, can we get an amen on that? <laughs> He's so cute. He's so cute. All right. I'm just thanking him for his joy. When he fills me up with this joy, sometimes it's a week I can feel him and it doesn't, it doesn't leave me. So I hope everyone can feel this beautiful love and joy that this being is radiating out to us right now. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Oh, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Deva, for, for bringing him up. Oh, he's saying, oh, I wouldn't have missed this. <laughs> Very cute. He's so cute. He wouldn't have missed this. All right. There was actually somebody, uh, Joe Miller, she asked, is it possible to heal in a state of joy? Because we always think we have to work and suffer to, to transform. And, and uh, what does that when he says, bring your house in order and work on your attachments and work on your stuff? You know, that, that balance or what, what, heal, what really heals or what the human idea of Oh, this has to hurt. Otherwise, it's not transformation. <laughs> it's too easy. Yes, yes, and and I, I mean, I was indoctrinated in much the same way. Um, here's the thing: what, what, at least what spirits showing me. So my current understanding, uh, when Shiva came uh, in December to you and I, Deva, Lord Shiva came, and 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 Archangel Michael, uh, no, sorry, Raphael and talked to us about healing and said that we're to take our eyes off the outside world. No matter, well, he said what was gonna be coming this year, which I did not believe, and I refused to even think about. But anyways, he, he you know showed some things and then said, but don't look outside, always only look inside and do the work inside. And yes, it is that kind of work about finding out where we're stuck, where we still haven't healed something. Do we have a relationship that doesn't feel right? Um, are we going to, you know, something spiritual and then we go back to our homes or, well, these days we turn off the computer and we start arguing with our family member or something. Is there still anger in there? Is there still addiction? Is there still, what's going on? Are we addicted to and still hanging on to old patterns, old beliefs that don't serve us anymore? And these are the kinds of things that uh, Shiva asked us to really go in and heal. And well, is healing easy or fun? <laughs> any of us who have done any of it, we know that it can, you know, it can, it can be um, challenging. Sometimes it happens just like that. And sometimes it takes, it's a process and that's okay. That's okay because it took many lifetimes to get these beliefs in place or these fears attached to us or these addictions or these different things going on, right? And so we want to get rid of those and do whatever it takes to do that. But does it have to be doom and gloom and, and, and just nothing but hard work? Absolutely not. And Sham always talks to us about that, you know, to mix in there the joy and ask for guidance from spirit because they're there to help us every step of the way. Every step of the way, especially Archangel Raphael. He has told me in December that he would be, well, of course, he knew what was coming. And I guess I didn't want to see it. So, um, but he did tell us. And he said, uh, in the days that come, you know, call on me. I will be there. And that's not just him. He, 
he's representative of whoever it is that you resonate with. Who, you're the God of your understanding, the helpers of your, your own spirit guides and angels, whatever it is that takes you to that place of um, peace and, and um, comfort and, and, and strength. That's, that's where you go. Mm. So it, I don't think it's all or nothing, Deva. According to what spirit's showing me, I think it's a little bit of work. I think it is. It can be classed as work, but you know, we everything that we do in life, most of it requires something, any wonderful thing, even keeping a fit body or good health, it takes effort. Mm. It takes something. So yeah, I think that's okay. But but I will say uh, the joy to speak to her her joy question. Yeah, the joy is really important. It's really important. Gratitude is another one. So mm. important to really look at what we have here. And even though this situation we happen to find ourselves in right now looks so bleak, it does to many people. It's very, very, de- I mean, a lot of people are in deep despair right now. And with our human eyes, yes, it does look like that. But when spirit comes to me and shares what's really going on, it is literally a death of the old and a cleansing cleansing it out and then a rebirth of the new it's a resurrection Mm -hmm. and it's going to be glorious it's and 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 they're all telling me if only we could see from that where we're going we could look back we go oh bring it on because wow this is really great so i know it feels Mm -hmm. feels hard right now but we're we're going to get through it and we're going to do it by uh doing our own inner work because as we do that we help everyone around us Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. um, somebody's asking um, what's up on the other side for all the coronavirus victims this is Jan Mauka why, uh, why did they choose this way to die And somebody else said, um, could we take a minute to send love and light to all those who have departed because of COVID-19 and and even more love and healing to those left behind? Is there any any special message around that? Like people, or is it, it's just the reason, you know, like, I, I, I guess that was the question. Is there something that comes through? Yes, very good question. What spirit has told me again and again and again, and so I'm going to go with it. Until I hear differently, I'm going with it. There are very few things that ever happen anywhere on this planet that weren't planned by our soul, and most of all, our deaths. So there's, I know we think of somebody who maybe gets hit by a car, oh, that's an accident, or somebody really young that dies, and we think, oh, that's an accident, oh, how tragic. Yes, it feels tragic for those left behind, but it was not an accident. Virtually no deaths are accidents. And so they're planned before we even arrive on this planet by our own souls to be part of something. And so the, the, just like anything else, yes, the COVID-19 deaths uh, were planned as well. They, that was their time. That was when they were going. And I've been told that if they didn't go that way, they probably would have gone somewhere else quite soon after. Mm-hmm. So um, that was that that's their 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 path. And um, it's hard to understand that. And I didn't understand it for a long, long time. And it really troubled me. But I thought, well, wait, you know, I can't, you know, I keep hearing this again and again and again. And I really had to embrace that concept. And and uh, so that's what spirit has told me about that. I think that it would be really beautiful right now, though, to um, just take a moment and just send some beautiful prayer energy, love energy, peace energy, um, comfort energy to all those that have lost their loved ones. They've lost their loved one, and it was, and it's particularly hard for them because it's at a time when they couldn't even mourn properly. They couldn't even, lots of times, even have any kind of a gathering. Um, and and have their friends and family near them, which normally would help them through the process. And so that that could that could feel very very um, challenging for so so many. And so yes, I I'm feeling that 
I'm feeling the presence actually, I was about to say Archangel Raphael, but as I was about to say that, it's like the energy of just, I'd say a host of angels. It's just, I don't even know, there's, there's a name for them, just a collection of beautiful high beings that are just here gathered around. And I can feel it so strongly in my body. If you could see me, my legs, everything's just shaking. There's so much energy right now. It's just pouring through. And they're just sending love to everyone that has that has been affected by this in whatever ways. Yes, by losing a loved one. Yes. Yes. And those that are ill now. And they're saying, and those that are sick. And those that are sick with worry. Those that are afraid they will be sick. They're afraid for their loved ones to be sick. They're just, they're just strengthening all of us right now and just sort of wrapping us in this blanket of love. It's really beautiful, guys. I, I'm just like the whole of me is just shaking. Um, it's very powerful. I don't think I've ever felt anything like this. And it must be because there's so many people right now that are all just connecting to this. Um, I'm sure you're used to it, Deva, because you do things with big groups like this, but I don't. And wow, can I ever feel it? For the first time, I can really feel this, uh, this collective energy. And, um, and I feel our loved ones that have crossed over, all of them, from this virus and from all things. I could just see them, all of them, just looking at us and just pouring love out to us. They're helping us. They're the ones who are helping us. They want us to be okay. They want us to be okay. Because when we're okay, they're even better. They're all, they're all right right now, but they're even better when we're okay. And you talked about it in your post the other day. It's so true. I couldn't agree with it more. It weighs them down when we're so broken. And of course we have to process our grief, of course, but uh, they're shining their light down on all of us. Mm. They're, they're trying to help all of us, to strengthen us. So just welcome it, just welcome it. Mm. We're just, so we'll send love and light to them and they're sending it right back to us. It's quite beautiful. We are really all one. Thank you. I hope you guys could feel that because could I ever, oh my gosh. Somebody said, uh, Patricia Polo, it's very difficult for me to live in this world because I love nature and animals and all is destroyed every day. Yes. yes, I hear you. I, I could really uh, relate to that. It's very hard for some of us to be here. Um, and I've had to make peace with that. Spirit has worked very hard with me on that because I often have one foot or more out the door. And they've said, no, Lisa. In fact, just recently, Shiva said, Lisa, this is a gift. This life today now is a gift. Everything is a gift. Everything is a gift. And David, you said it, I think it was yesterday in your mantra, something about uh, uh, learning that the, the chaos, this chaos, it was Maten's story mm -hmm. about chaos and how that's how we shake it up. And that's how we, 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 we realize where we're at with everything. It's, it's, I hate to say it this way, but it's kind of a game. It's just a game because it's an illusion anyways. It's just a bit of a game. And it's a really dramatic game at, at times. And, um, and I often wonder, why am I playing it? Why did we even create this? But we did. We created it to uh, know ourselves as that and to experience ourselves as that, i.e. love and compassion and unity and all of that. And it's a do, it, this whole planet is a duality planet. And it's always going to have it. There will never just be peace and love on this third dimensional uh, space here. So there's always duality because that's how it was designed. And we came to this earth at this time 
to experience this grand this grand show. We really did. We chose this. Every single one of you listening, we, you chose this. We did. We could have stayed. We could have stayed up there, over there, but we didn't. We said, no, you know what? I want to get in on that. That looks really interesting. Let's see what that's all about. And it's true. That's what they're telling me. So um, I had to really wrap my head around that. And I tell you, I still wrestle. I still wrestle with wanting to be on this planet. I tell you, I, I half the time I'm thinking, you know, I'm okay if I check out. But I know that spirit says, ah, uh -uh, Lisa. No, no, no. You, you. This is where you want it to be, and it is a gift. And uh, and just trust that again. It's all in divine and perfect order. It may not look like it, but it really is. Mm. Um, that's the best I can I can give at this moment around that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've seen some comments where people say, "Yeah, I've heard this so many times," and we all know it. And we still have to hear it again because we are still living sometimes not in a full aware, awareness of it. And sometimes it's another way somebody will, another angle or just another, it's just the right, right moment for us to hear it. And it goes in and it's something really transforms. But there's only that message. There's only that message. But we obviously need to hear it again and again in so many different ways. And, and, uh, and yeah, so um, how is Mother Earth coping? That's a beautiful, from Karen Clark. How is Mother Earth coping with this? Is this our lesson? From what I've been uh, told, Mother Earth is doing just fine. She is, uh, This is what I've been told that she gave her her body for us to play and to have the experience, the full experience of light and dark and you know up and down and good and bad, whatever, however you want to term it. She offered that to us. It's a great gift she gave us. And um, she's letting this play out. Now I have been told that the higher beings are only going to let us play so long. And they usually don't interfere with our free will, but apparently they will be interfering because they've gotten permission to do so, to do that. They're going to let us go so far, and I'm not sure where that ends, at what point, but at, at some point they will step in and they will say, all right, humans, enough is enough. We are going to step in and they're not going to let the whole earth be destroyed, even though it looks like it's going in that direction. It absolutely does. And if, if humans kept doing what they were doing, it would. Mm. It, without divine guidance and intervention, it would. So I think everybody you know, has to take responsibility for their actions and really ask themselves, are you walking lightly on the earth and how are you honoring her? And what little thing you can do maybe today, just today, can change something for her. And, and like your own mother, like your own loved one, you know, how, how would you value and honor and respect her mm. and you wouldn't trample on her or you wouldn't do, you know, some of the things that we do uh, as, as humans on this earth. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's helping us to, she's offering her, herself as a platform for us to grow and learn and stumble and fall and make mistakes, but get up again and make different choices. And we can start today and every moment make a different choice. Mm and not saying thank you and also just thank her but in the end in the end i have been told that uh spirit will intervene and and, and certainly help save, save her in the end mm. but that doesn't let us off the hook we need to do our part absolutely mm. absolutely yeah. for our own karma for our own selves it's not just that she's going to be looked after but everything we do has an effect so for our own karmic uh, evolution. We want to, you know, help ourselves to do better every moment of the day. Right. Mm. Mm. Let's see what else we have here.
how do we recognize the good light workers and the other ones who can really take advantage? Um, see, that's a very personal question, but basically, I think it's just to shine some light. This is from Doris Charon or Sharon. Um, just this thing of light and dark, you know, like is there light and dark? And uh, and um, yeah, how do we do we do we have to protect ourselves from the dark, or is that all an illusion? That's a huge question. Wow. It is, but it's a great question. It really is, Doris. Thank you for that. And there's so many levels of that. It's uh, on a real human level. I guess you could say human level. I would say um, trust ourselves. We were told that you and I by Shiva in December that we're going to need in the coming year, which is this one, to learn to trust ourselves mm -hmm. and develop our intuition. Look, we all have it. We all have it. Every hunch we get, every gut feeling we have, that's our intuition. And uh, so we need to really uh, uh, pay attention to it, trust it, and follow it. Because the more we do, Spirit says, ah, she's listening. Okay, I'm going to give her more. I will help her even guide her more. So definitely trust your intuition. And they talked about specifically false prophets and all these different people that will come out and say, I know the way. Come with me. Come with me. We are to use our intuition on that. Really go inside and say, does this feel good to me? Or does that energy feel good? You know how you walk into a house sometimes and you can just feel the energy is just off or you meet someone and you just don't want to go near them or you meet someone and you want to hug them. We know the difference. And so just trust it. That's what I would give as advice. Trust, trust, trust yourself because you know what lines up for you in your, in your insides. And um, no matter what anyone else is saying, I'm doing it right now with a lot of people that I feel one way and they, they have something else to say and even my own family and, and my own son on certain issues. And it's like, nope, we have to honor what we know to be true in that moment. And right or wrong, that's we have to follow that because when we don't follow it, that's when we get in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's when we're not in alignment anymore and that's, that's never good with us. So that's number one. But as a global question, um, that's just kind of how to weave through this earthly game, I guess, and not get blown up by the mind, you know, the, the, in the minefield. But um, on a bigger level, you know, I have understood now, I've come to understand that there are so many layers to truth and to what's going on that, it's way too big and complex for any human being to hold. And so they show us what we need to learn or what, what they want to have the earth know or the people or what level, you know, we are at or the people that we're going to be listening are at. There's certain, you know, they can only go so, so far with us. So I don't know. I certainly don't profess to know anything about the higher, higher, higher places because I don't think anyone can access that. But uh, as per what would be, useful for us right now as humans. Yeah, yeah, there is darker energy, there's heavier energy. I don't like to think about that and, and even believe in that, but yeah, there is. Now, is it an illusion? Ultimately it is, ultimately, ultimately, but none of us are living in that high state of rarefied, you know, beingness right now, right? So while we're here uh, slugging it out in the, in the, you know, down here, um yeah just just again pay attention to how that feels when you when you connect with things you read things you see people you meet music anything like that just feel into that and if it doesn't feel right i always say if it's if it's not a hell yes it's a hell no right because it you know it's got to feel really good and it's got to feel right so um if there's someone you meet, and I suggest this to all my clients too, if they're going to work with people that do energy healing or anything, feel into them because some may be ill-intentioned, some may be well-intentioned, but they're not clear. And some of that uh, lower vibrational stuff is around them and maybe working around them. Mm -hmm. So you want to, um, you know, tune in, check in. See how it feels, how you feel when you're around them. See how you feel when you leave their presence. And if it doesn't feel good, I say do without. Go towards something that feels more light. 
field. And don't judge it. Don't judge that for being what it is. It's there to help you maybe to understand the difference, right? Yeah. Hmm. So because we are almost coming to the end of our little time together, I thought it would be just beautiful one more time to just all close our eyes and for, for to see if there's any anything else that wants to come through and expectedly un unquestioned <laughs> <laughs> and uh and and yeah let's see yeah so we'll just take that time and i'll just um see if anything's here to connect with us Well, um, this is surprising. Um, if anything, I think I expected George because he's been with me so much the last days, but it isn't George, it's uh, Abraham Lincoln. Now I can tell you guys, I have not connected with Abraham since the book, since I started the book and since I channeled him. Uh, well, that's not true. Maybe one other time on some other matter he came through, but generally I don't channel him at all for people, for clients, for groups or anything like this. But I feel him here very strongly. It's not what I expected at all. It's not an angel, although he's an angel. Um, He's saying to each of us, you are more powerful than you think you are. When you're connected to the all that is, you have all that is. Stand in the light that you are. When you stand in the light that you are, you will always do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, it will help you, it will help everyone. Let go of the concept of being small or weak or uninformed. There is so much magnificence in each one of you. He is filling me up right now with such power Oh my God, I, I hope some of you guys can feel this because it's just, I, can't, I don't even have words for it, but the, the, the level of power I feel right now. And he's saying, Lisa, that is what everyone is. We are really powerful beings of light. And we are awakening to that truth now. Welcome this change. Welcome this change. Welcome this change. You will be so glad that you did. And walk bravely into the, the new world that is being created right now. He says, if you could see how many beings are here to help you, all of you, 
beings from far and wide. They're gathered to help each and every one of you. You are not alone. You are not alone. You have never been alone. Know yourself as the light and you will be just fine. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's just leaving everyone. He's just feel, I feel he's just filling everyone with extra strength and fortitude, with extra courage, with, with clarity, with clarity and with connection to source. So just, 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 just absorb the energy that spirit is just giving every one of you. I'm just thanking him for showing up. I'm thanking them all for showing up, everybody who showed up. Every one of you guys who showed up, mm -hmm. seen and unseen. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for being part of it because, because there's just this field that I've never felt before. I mean, it's just a, oh my gosh, field. And um, I just thank all of you. And uh, you're not alone. That's, that's, that's what I'll leave you with. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. And uh, you know me, I usually don't feel anything. <laughs> usually don't feel all the spirits and all the energies and all that kind of stuff. I think I find something to do. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I think uh, my body is shaking wow yes i i felt it i did feel it today and that's uh beautiful <laughs> wow thank you thank you so much lisa and thank everybody so much for joining us and for being ready for this little adventure we we enjoy together and uh all is love all is love, and you are love. You are love for love. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.